here today to give a historical retrospective of electronic information systems. My name is Edward Johnson, aka Eddie, and I'm the president of InfoEd International. I'm here today with Pat Johnson. Pat Johnson was the vice president for sponsored programs of the Research Foundation of the State University of New York. She retired back in 2006 after a 40-year career in electronic research administration. How are you today, Pat? I'm fine. Thank you, Eddie. Nice to be here. Back in, I believe it was, you started in 1967, you were a clerk at the foundation. That's correct. What kind of responsibilities did you have back then? Well, fresh out of college, I was assigned to process grant applications, which meant they were paper copies submitted by the faculty, and we reviewed their budgets to make sure they were complete and accurate. We added the, what is now known as FNA and made sure that those applications were compliant with all the rules and regulations, and we submitted them <clears throat> right to the federal government by mail. An entirely paper-based process. How did you make changes in those kinds of things in that environment? Well, we whited them out and put them in a typewriter and corrected whatever was incorrect. You had photocopying capabilities? We did. We did. We photocopied and we made sure that a copy was saved at the foundation offices and then a copy was sent to the faculty member. Managing deadlines must have been a nightmare. That it was a nightmare. In fact, there was no Memorial Day weekend that I ever liked because it was the largest NIH deadline. And we processed, I remember in one day, 300 proposals. Oh, my God. Right now, with the grants.gov and the electronic submissions, they've really spread that out over the course of a month. I mean, there is definitely a heavy load in October, but it's not the same because they had those deadline dates were absolute, right? Yes, they were. Right. And you had to have it in their hands by that deadline. So that meant relying on the U.S. Post Office, which wasn't always, you know, things happened. Right. So, And I've heard stories of, of investigators or other administrators actually jumping on a plane to get correct. their applications and if they were, were not confident they could get there in time via the mail. Absolutely. Those were the faculty members who were working on their proposals up to the last minute and actually walked them into our offices, got them processed, and got back on a plane to Washington. At that point, there was really no electronic system, if you will, no computers in place to manage these things. No. When did you see those actually come on board? Around 1968-69, the foundation started its first electronic system. We had a mainframe, an IBM mainframe, and we key punched in data items and produced at the end of a month a report, much like a checkbook balancing account. What kind of information were you keying in? You were keying in, I suspect, demographic information about the investigator, where they worked, and budget? Probably we, none of the science and the abstract, I would imagine. That's correct. At that time, it really was all financial. It was um, the faculty members' information, the university's information, and the budget that was approved. Remember, at that time, the foundation was actually paying all the bills for everybody. So the salaries were paid out of our offices, the purchase orders were paid, travel was reimbursed. So we had all of the financial records associated with that account, which we input into the system. And therefore, at the end of the month, the faculty member knew what he had spent or and what was remaining. Now, you are managing the checks for the sponsored projects? That's correct. Or the, not the university system? No, just sponsored projects. Okay. So that led to another point, and this is, I believe this came out, I'm going to guess towards the late 80s when they started getting into time and effort reporting, right? And uh, what do you remember about that transition in terms of what had to be accounted for and, and what you had to do from a systems perspective to manage that? Well, as I recall, when A21 was revised in the late 80s and effort reporting was required, we had to make sure we had all of the cost-sharing data, which then required us to create a system to track all of that cost-sharing, which we did, and then related that back to the salaries that were paid from the project so that we had a complete picture of a faculty member's effort, both paid and unpaid, which was produced monthly and was signed off on by the faculty member, which was our form of effort reporting. So the reporting was done monthly? That's correct. I know a lot of places do it quarterly and there's different annual plans they can do, but monthly, that's we were, a lot of detail. It was a lot of detail. And I think um, later on the system may have been revised, but if I recall correctly, each of our monthly reports had that information on it. So, 
Now, it did was, you use that as an opportunity of returning like their account balances on their sponsor project? That's as correct. Well? It 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 contained all that information, the award budget, what was expended, what was encumbered, and what remained unspent, along with the percentage of effort devoted to by each and every member, not only the faculty member, but whoever was paid on that project. Key personnel, or I mean, or non-key personnel. All key personnel. Key personnel. All key personnel. Right. right. So then. From that, what kind of reporting did you have back to the government in terms of quarterly, annually? Usually, they're expecting a financial report back from all these projects. Right at the end of the at the end of the grant period, whenever that was, we would file a financial statement, and contained within that was the effort. But I don't remember until the mid '90s that there was anything very specifically done regarding the faculty's signature for effort reporting. So it was basically taken on word? You turn in the reports and they would essentially go... It was a financial it? report, yeah. Unchallenged, but right. just basically was... Right, it was just submitted. I want to thank you for taking the time to go over this today. It's been a very interesting trek over your 40 years and how ERA has evolved over it. So thanks again. You're welcome.